After the first two videos in this series, we now have one template set up in ModX using our own markup, and we have a few ModX fields generating content dynamically within that template. Now we want to create different templates for the different layouts of our site. We could simply duplicate and modify the template that we have. That's a perfectly acceptable use of ModX. But there's a very powerful feature of ModX that we haven't utilized yet, and that's a type of element called chunks. Chunks can contain any snippet of HTML code, or JavaScript or CSS for that matter, but front-end code. No PHP is to be used in chunks. You don't need to write a single line of PHP to build an amazing website in ModX. Let's demonstrate the use of chunks with the code in our template. There are sections of the markup that we know for certain will be used across the entire site on every page. These global elements are perfect candidates for chunkification. That's the technical term, by the way. For example, let's cut our HTML doc type declaration and the head element to the clipboard and replace them with a modx chunk tag. This consists of two open square brackets, the token for chunks, which is a dollar sign, then any string or name we want to use for the chunk, let's call this one HTML underscore head, followed by two closing square brackets, and let's save the template. If we view the site right now, it's decidedly borked because the home page uses this template and we've replaced the head element with a call to a chunk that doesn't exist. So let's create a new chunk. Under the elements tab, right click on chunks and select new chunk or click the new chunk icon. This is the chunk edit view. A name is required. We need to use the same name we called into our template, HTML underscore head. We paste the content into the chunk code field and hit save. Now when we view our site, all is good again, because the tag we created in the template references or includes this chunk of the same name. We can now use this chunk anywhere in ModX, another template, the content field of a resource, or even inside another chunk. If we look at our template, there are a lot more opportunities to reuse our code in this way. We can break it up into semantically named chunks to help organize the code and prevent duplication. It also makes our next task of creating another template much easier, as you will see. Right now I've made chunks out of the main menu, submenu, sidebar, and footer. This is what our template looks like now. Pretty neat. Now we can duplicate this template for the news layout. The news page on our site is slightly different from our other interior pages. It has a narrower sidebar and two news-specific widgets in that sidebar. There's also other features of this page that will utilize ModX's powerful PHP framework without us writing a single line of PHP. More on that later. For now, right-click on the template name under the Elements tab and choose Duplicate Template. Let's call this new template News Page Template. We know that the sidebar is different, so let's change the name of that chunk to sidebar underscore news. By default, ModX orders chunks in the tree view alphabetically by name, so I like to group similar chunks by starting the names with like strings, a namespace, if you will. There's also a feature called categories for grouping and organizing elements, but that's for a later tutorial. As you can see, we've used the sidebar markup from the news page on our static site to create a sidebar news chunk. We'll change the class name of the page content div because that's the only other difference from our interior template. Now under the resources tab, we create a new resource and make the page title field news. Notice that even though the label of this form field is title, we can hover over it to see its modx tag and that's the now familiar page title tag. We'll select the new template we just made and ModX will refresh the resource edit view for us because potentially the new template would access different template variables for us to set. More on that in a later episode. For now, let's copy and paste the content from our static site into the content field and hit save. Let's do the same for the home page. We duplicate the interior template and call the new one home page template. We'll save it as is for now. The home page on our site is, not unusually, quite different from our other pages. But we're not worried because ModX will make this easy for us. We copy the section of markup for our slider and we make a new chunk, slider. We do the same for the welcome banner. Let's call this one welcome. 
we have the same page content container, but below that we also have two other content containers. Let's make a chunk for each of those. News listings and home widget. Now we add these new chunks to our home page template. Remove the submenu chunk and change the page content containers class and save the template. We can right click on our home resources to use the quick update resource feature. This allows you to make quick changes without actually reloading the page. It's all done via Ajax. You might have noticed I did this with chunks earlier. Here we can assign our new home page template and click save and close. When we view the site, we can see it's nearly perfect, except the background is the wrong height. This is because I have a unique background style targeting the home page only through the use of a unique class on the HTML element. In our home page template, we don't have access to that markup because it's inside the HTML underscore head chunk. So how do we make that chunk template specific? Well, ModX is so flexible that there are a myriad ways to solve any problem. Off the top of my head, I can think of a half dozen ways to do this. The most obvious would be to swap that HTML underscore head chunk for another one, say HTML underscore head underscore home. Although that would work, it seems like overkill to duplicate that chunk and only change one little class name in one element. So here's another method. We will use a placeholder. Placeholders in ModX contain values like a variable, and the values can be set and modified in a lot of different ways. Let's open up the HTML underscore head chunk for editing. Where the class interior is currently assigned, we will replace it with two open square brackets, the token for placeholders, which is a plus sign, and a name. I'm going to use something semantic like HTML underscore element underscore class and follow it with two closing square brackets. I'll save this chunk and go back to our template for editing. Now inside the chunk tag, I'm going to follow the chunk name with a question mark, which is a fairly universal syntax for delimiting a set of properties or parameters. I'll add an ampersand to delimit a key value pair. The key will be the same as my placeholder name, HTML underscore element underscore class, followed by an equal sign and a backtick. Note, this is not a single quote, but a backtick, which in ModX is how you wrap the values of properties. The value I want here is home. Then I add a closing backtick before the closing two square brackets. After I save this template, the home page looks the way it should. Great. However, when we visit the other pages, we see the background is gone. That's because the pages using the other templates don't have a value assigned to that placeholder in that chunk. We have several templates and we could define the property in every chunk call like we did with our homepage template, but ModX provides a way to instead set a default value for that property. We edit the HTML head chunk one more time. This time we go to the properties tab. We unlock the default properties and click create property. The name is the same as our placeholder, HTML underscore element underscore class. That's the key in the key value pair. The value is the default class name we want, interior. As you can see, there's other options, but we'll leave those for now. We click done, and we must still save the property set. And now we can view one of the other pages. The placeholder in that chunk contains the default value we assigned to it, and ModX renders our custom markup perfectly. Whew, we've learned a lot so far in this video series. The next episode, we're going to show you how to install and use powerful PHP snippets without writing a single line of PHP. Mm -hmm.